I took two eight foot two by twos and I cut them in half. So I've got four four foot two by twos. And I'm taking each one and driving them in about a foot at the end of each row. Now I know you're probably thinking a foot isn't that much, but here's the deal. It's going to be secured across the side here. And so I went and cut a couple pieces of scrap and I'm going to put them here and that will kind of hold them uh, you know from you know either falling out or anything like that because they're resting on the two bys right here on the frame of the bed. So I'm going to screw these in. This scrap piece here is a old piece of oak I found so it's really hard to drill through. And this is all just scrap that I had. Even the two by twos were laying out for quite some time. Okay, now this allows me to kind of bend them in a little bit. So I'm making almost kind of like a tripod or a teepee type, like that. Yeah, just kind of like that. Not too close together, but. Okay, then I'll find another scrap to put here. Okay, so I found a couple scraps here. Okay, I went and found some of this welded wire left over from the fencing here. And I just cut it down to size and laid it on the ground and tried to kind of walk on it to straighten it out but it's not perfect but it'll work great for this now what i could do too is if these holes were too small i could cut some of these holes out with just a pair of tin snips but i think i think it's going to be all right i think the two inch by four inch is going to work just fine so i'm just going to staple this to here and this will also keep it rigid from moving back and forth this way. I'm not going to go hog wild on all the staples. Probably five on each side here. And this, I mean, this wire was really bent bad. This was the old stuff that the, uh, when I had the fence up with just the T-posts, this was what the deer actually just walked across and tr trampled. Uh, they knew, they knew that it was weak, so. And then I have one for this side here. They are the craziest thing where they send out these little tendrils and they just latch on to each other and you have to pull them apart. I've already gone through and done that. But these little tendrils right here, they just go out and they know that they're going to get heavy and have peace. So they go out, grab whatever they can, wrap themselves around it, and then just hold on tight. Even if it happens to be their neighbor right here. So uh, I, I released them. I freed them from their bondage from each other. And now I'm just going to put these through here. And what they will do 
is see how these they kind of grab together look at that so what they'll do is now grab onto the fencing and hold on tight and let the others go so now what I'll do is they're starting to grow I'll just come back and make sure that I just train them up and I want to try to train them on the outside mostly but there's going to be some on the inside perfectly fine with that because I can reach in it's only two feet so I can easily reach in and harvest like this piece of cake and per request people wanted to know how the garlic experiment was coming along on the left side here from here uh, this is without the bone meal the right side was the section that I planted with bone meal I put like a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon in each hole before I dropped the garlic clove in now I don't know if the camera does it justice but look at how much smaller these stems are than these over here now there's a couple smaller ones here but the rest of them look at look at behind here how big how thick these are that's like as thick as my thumb pretty much all of these are that thick except for some reason there's a few in the front and this one here but most of the other ones are really thick over here these are on the outside of course they're much thinner than the ones inside in here they're a little bit thicker but not not quite as thick as my thumb so they are much thicker on the side with the bone meal so I will let you know it's going to be sometime next month where we're going to start harvesting so that's going to be the real test when I start pulling those out so there's the garlic for now and then a couple people had asked about the goji berry these were the ones that I had sitting in or they were in the little grow boxes well not really little they were I think two foot by two foot but uh, they weren't doing an awful lot they produce fine but they weren't doing great but I put these in here last year and look at this I've got there's two plants this one here was actually I think it was like a quarter of this size in those boxes and they were in those boxes for gosh what five six years and then they produced but I mean they weren't that huge and that one over there this one over here was really small in the box but look at they are loving these raised beds so this is going to be their permanent home definitely and lastly check this out I put that pomegranate I don't know if you guys remember that video the uh, one I did about the not so pretty side of gardening where I had that pomegranate that was in the in the backyard for quite a few years and I thought it had completely died and so I kept <laughs> I kept mowing over it and everything well come to find out I looked at it carefully and it was still alive and so I forgot about it again and I hit it with the mower uh, yesterday and so I thought you know what I'm gonna pull it out of there now I said at the time that when I pull that out and I put it in one of these beds that it's not gonna like it you watch it survived six years of drought in the backyard and now let's see what it does here so <laughs> let's keep our fingers crossed so that's about it right now not an awful lot going on I still do have the rhubarb and the onions you saw the peas walking onions and the spinach and the lettuce and things like that but uh, um, I haven't really started doing my spring planting yet because we still could have a frost so that'll happen in just a couple weeks and I'll bring you along for that but uh, for now that's pretty much what's going on in the garden and I know a couple of people have wondered about the orchard I'll take you down in the orchard in a day or two and show you what's going on down there all right so thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you all later